yeah, I'm pretty excited. I just got the second gen Starlink kit yesterday. I gotta be honest, as a full-time RVer, I just didn't think Starlink was something that I necessarily had to have. It was $100 per month. You had to find open cells for service. You had to set it up, tear it down, and it was just so new that I didn't even really look into it that much. But as soon as I heard that roaming was enabled, a light bulb just went off, and I think this is gonna be a huge game changer, especially for our viewers. Today, I'm gonna go over how I was able to find an open service address, how I was able to get it in a week, are you able to set this up outside of your original service area? Is roaming enabled out of the box? The initial setup, as well as speed testing, and my overall thoughts. First, let's open this thing up really quick. This is exactly how it comes. No extra packaging, so just be aware of that. There is not too much to this, so this will be pretty quick. Underneath the packaging, there it is. A metal base, the dish itself. Oop, that clicked right in. Simple instruction sheet. And then you have the router, wireless router, as well as 75 feet of cable. And that is all that you get in the packaging. So this isn't gonna be a very techie review, but I do want to share this with everyone and show how this experience works because honestly, this is gonna be huge for our viewers. Thankfully, the system is pretty simple. I think the most difficult part is just getting your hands on one and uh, I'm really excited to test out the roaming features and to see actually how this thing is able to be set up, uh, especially with it just getting shipped across the country as we're traveling. So quickly, here is the second generation router. This is a wireless router. All it has is the 110 power cable as well as the power cable for the dish itself. Now, of course, being an RVer, we would love to have a 12 volt adapter. I'm sure that would be coming out soon and probably somebody out there has already hacked that. I hear these don't take that much power around 40 to 100 watts up to like 150 watts when it's doing the insane snow melt mode. We try to avoid the snow, so we may never get to test that feature out, but I think that's absolutely nuts that this thing can melt snow. Oh, and I do wanna mention that I saw this does not have an ethernet port, so if you wanna hardwire it to your computer or to a pep wave or something like that, you do need to get an adapter, which is about 25 bucks, I believe. So here's the one end of the 75 foot cable as well as the other end, which is attached to the satellite. And it actually comes out. So it is basically just a double-ended 75 foot cable. And I know you can get longer ones, I believe up to 150 feet. Some of the other accessories you can get are things like a pole mount or a different type of roof mount. Uh, for us right now, I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna set it up. Obviously, we travel quite a bit, so we're gonna be doing it um, every week or so. So I'm just gonna use this metal base for now and perhaps get a pole mount in the future for the top of the RV. But before we set this thing up, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I was able to get this thing in one week. So a couple of weeks ago, we were at the Grand Canyon with some good friends, and Jared happens to have a Gen 1 Starlink satellite system, and he's had it for, I believe, over a year now. And that's when I found out about the roaming, so I asked him how he liked it, how it's been going, and he's absolutely ecstatic about the system. So of course, I went on to the website, and I was putting in my address, our home address in Minnesota, and then some family addresses around in some different places, and everything that popped up said pre-order only, and shipping was not available till the end of 2022 or perhaps 2023. So he was actually able to find an open service address that I was able to use, uh, which you can put that in as your service address, and then your shipping address you can put um, to a FedEx location, whether it be a Walgreens or a Dollar General, which we then had shipped uh, about a week down the road as we were traveling. 
and that was coming from California across the country. So if we were still over on the West Coast, it probably would have showed up in about four days. So now that leads us to, is this gonna work outside of that service address, which is across the country? So I'm gonna set this all up plug it in, run the cables, and we're gonna go through the setup process and hopefully find out if roaming is enabled right away, if the setup process just goes extremely smooth, or if perhaps I made a mistake ordering this because it was not actually to my own address. I have a short window as the puppy is sleeping. Chris is out running errands right now. And so I'm just gonna plug this in um, to our dinette. I'm gonna run the cable through the slide in our RV, uh, which I'll then run outside and just put the dish out in the front uh, driveway of where we're uh, at the campground here. And that'll just kind of be my temporary setup for testing. I don't know if you can see down here, but slides and RVs already have a hole to the outside. If you look down there, you can see light already coming in from the slide. So I'm just gonna shove the cable through that and then I'll grab it on the other side, outside. He's only, oh, Louie, he's only four months old. How you doing, buddy? Hi, hey, I'm making a video. Okay, the other end of that cable just goes right into the back of the router. Let's see, it's already got the power light on. Okay, the dish automatically starts searching for satellites right away. I haven't even opened the app or done anything yet. And as I was setting up the camera outside, it started moving. So we're gonna go ahead, open the Starlink app up and just follow the instructions. Uh, start setup. Pretty simple, plug it in, connect to Wi-Fi, join the Starlink Wi-Fi. Looks like we're already connected. Wi-Fi name. I'm gonna set up a password. Just gonna set up a temporary one. So then I'm gonna click on to my new Wi-Fi link called Titanium. And the dish says it is booting and offline. This might take a few minutes for it to boot up and uh, we'll just give it some time and see what happens. Hopefully it just works. I haven't changed any settings or done anything besides just created the Wi-Fi network. So I did have to switch my service address to something a lot closer to where I am. Very easy to change that service address. I just went into my laptop, logged into my account, and uh, change the service address. I'm sure you can do it from the app as well, but it was really easy to just change it and drop and drag the dot to a location. I had to try three, four before it uh, gave me one that was open. I couldn't move it to the exact location in Tennessee where we're at. I had to move it to closer to Memphis uh, because it said it wasn't servicing this area out here. Um, the dish is still sitting in the flat mode but what's interesting, if you look on the debug data, it switched uh, from roaming false to roaming true. So I'm excited to see that change. Actually, now it has switched to online with the green dot. Um, it appears to be working. It has a red flag that says non Starlink Wi Fi router. Please use only the included Starlink Wi Fi router. So I'm not sure uh, the dish is still sitting flat. It hasn't moved. I think from what I've seen on the videos, it should uh, go flat. And then when it finds its satellites move at more of an angle, it says it's online, but I don't think it's quite booted up yet. So again, I'm gonna give it a few more minutes and see what happens next. Oh, it just, it just moved. You can see that it's now sitting at an angle and not flat. So I believe it's searching for the satellites right now. This is pretty exciting stuff. I'm gonna try running that speed test one more time and see if it's connected. Oh, it's connected. Over 100 megabits download right now. Um, that's absolutely amazing. Uh, again, so excited for this to work. We've been using Verizon uh, unlimited plan on a hotspot 
and a MIMO antenna for three years now roaming around the country. And it's worked really, really good, but it's not fast. We average maybe around five to 10 megabits download, and then the upload speeds are absolutely atrocious, around one or two. So I know you can get upwards of 300 megabits per second on download, and honestly, right now it's showing over 500. This is pretty crazy. So the download speeds are gonna be great. Obviously they're gonna be super fast, and that's awesome. But really what I'm looking for is increased upload speeds. It usually takes me about 24 hours to upload a YouTube video. A lot of ours are around 30 minutes. So I just let it run overnight. And honestly, sometimes up to 24 hours it takes. So right now it seems to be bouncing between offline and online. So I'm not sure if it's still trying to calibrate or if it's uh, maybe too far away for the service area. So it seems to be evening out a little bit, maybe 15, 20 minutes later. Uh, I'm running some UCLA speed tests and 187 megabits down and 21 up. So that's pretty amazing blows away any speeds we've ever seen on our Verizon network. And uh, so far things are, are working. So again, it's gonna be the stability issues, um, which I don't know if it's just, that's how it's setting up. Um, it doesn't look like the dish has moved anymore, but, and then here it just popped up, obstructed offline. So I'm not sure if it's the location I'm at or if it's how far away my service area is but uh, it's definitely having some service issues in and out. Oh, one thing I haven't tried yet is a factory reset. I know I've heard a lot of people have to do that when they first get it. So maybe I'll just try doing the factory hard reset and see if that uh, kind of clears some things out. And to do that factory reset, just looking in the app, it tells you to power cycle the router three times, uh, roughly at a two to three second interval. So just plugging it out, in, out, in, out, in, and, uh, and then letting it reboot. It's a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be. All right, so it did the factory reset. It made me reset up the network and the password, and it's back online right now. Ran another speed test, still phenomenal speeds, but uh, obviously we're gonna have to see if it cuts in and out. So. I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit more and try to get some solid testing done. And then uh, I'll come back with a conclusion. Well, here we are 24 hours later and the Starlink dish has stabilized some. The app now shows how many minutes of interruption you should expect. And honestly, that's kind of the story of what it's been. There is a lot of obstruction in the wooded area that we're at and a lot of service interruptions. So I actually ended up moving the dish a few times around the campsite to try to find the best location. And on the app, there's this really cool camera feature where you can point it up to the sky and it actually scans the entire sky and shows the obstructions and tells you if it's a good place for the dish to go or not. Most of the time it said uh, you better move it to a new location. And then once or twice it actually said this is a decent location. So that's where I ended up uh, leaving it. And actually I even put it on top of the truck to see if it would be uh, any better just being a little bit higher off the ground and uh, hopefully getting out away from the obstructions that are there. You can really see how wooded this campsite area is that we're at right now. And if there is foliage on the trees, you would definitely have probably an even worse reception than what we're having right now in the springtime. And so what do those service interruptions mean? Well, basically uh, streaming devices like Netflix worked pretty well during an entire movie. We'd only have one or two interruptions last night. And that's because of the way those buffer where it pretty much keeps a steady signal uh, going through. Uh, and it doesn't show that exact interruption when, you're, when your service drops. Now, on the other hand, if you were on your phone looking at apps or if you're on your laptop looking at websites you'll definitely feel those service drops as it basically just sits there and spins and tries to find the website and so we'll have this blazing fast speed but with all these uh, service interruptions that we're getting here it's definitely not the best service.
So I'm really excited to head to our next location and hopefully there's less trees there and we're really gonna be able to see what the full power of Starlink can do. So overall, I'm really excited to add this to our full-time RV life, not only for all the new remote boondocking locations that we're gonna be able to start looking at, but also for fun locations like national parks. That's one of those things that almost every single national park has zero service. And it's gonna be so great to be able to spend a little bit more time there. Usually we would just spend a couple days and then head on out because we need to have service for our business. But to be able to spend an even a longer amount of time and be able to work at the same time, it's gonna be amazing. Plus all the rural state parks as well as campsites all over that just don't have good cell signal. This is just gonna open up a huge, huge network of places that we can stay at. And I can't tell you how excited we are. So stay tuned for updates in our regular videos that you would normally see as well as dedicated episodes on Starlink coming up.